There's nothing more crazy than letting your 9 meter wide, 50 meter tall rocket fall out of the sky belly first and then try to light your engines basically very last moment in order to go from horizontal to vertical to hopefully land softly. SpaceX is trying some pretty crazy things with their Starship rocket. Elon Musk is working on a vehicle that could revolutionize space travel. The Starship, as it'll be called, will be a fully reusable transportation system capable of transporting up to 100 people to Mars. Elon Musk's private spaceflight business, SpaceX, was founded with the idea of making life multiplanetary. According to Musk, if we stay on Earth indefinitely, there will be an eventual extinction event, and the only alternative is to evolve into a multiplanetary species and a spacefaring civilization. Musk has often expressed his desire to develop communities on Mars. Settlements, he says, would require a significant number of people to become self-sustaining. So, is the plan only a utopian fantasy you'd expect from a wealthy entrepreneur or a practical reality? We'll answer this question and more in this video, so stay with us till the end to find out. To make your fantasy a reality, you'll need a capable automobile. The Starship is a rocket and spacecraft combo capable of transporting more than 100 people to Mars at a time. The system is meant to be totally reusable, which means that the main hardware components will not be abandoned in the sea or burned up as with some of the launch systems, but will instead be recovered from orbit. They can then be refurbished and reflown, lowering the overall cost of the operation. The spacecraft, dubbed Starship, will be launched atop a super heavy rocket. The integrated system known as Starship will tower 120 meters tall. Let's start with the spacecraft. The stainless steel vehicle with its nose cone and landing fins looks like a rocket ship from the golden age of science fiction. Six highly efficient Raptor engines developed over the course of a decade by SpaceX are located at the back of the 50 meter long craft. The engine's design reduces the quantity of propellant wasted by breaking down the combustion process into phases. The propellant tanks are located in the vehicle's center. These provide the Raptors with liquid methane and liquid oxygen. The fuel is methane and the oxidizer is oxygen, a chemical that causes the fuel to burn. Methalox is the name given to this combo. Although methane is an unusual fuel for rocket engines, it can provide a lot of thrust. In view of Musk's plans for Mars, it's also a wise decision. The Sabatier reaction, according to SpaceX founder Elon Musk, might be used to synthesize methane from Martian subterranean water and atmospheric carbon dioxide. Refueling the Starship using Martian resources for the return voyage to Earth would provide a level of self-sufficiency, making travels more viable and cost-effective. A massive payload compartment towards the front of the spacecraft, also referred to as the upper stage, will be able to transport significant cargo or people to deep space destinations. Let's go on to the rocket now. Super Heavy will be 70 meters long and packed with 3,400 tons of cryogenic methalox. It will be propelled by 32 Raptor engines and should have a maximum thrust of more than 70 mega newtons. It should be capable of transporting up to 150 tons to low Earth orbit. This will make Super Heavy more powerful than the massive Saturn V launcher utilized in the 1960s and 1970s for the Apollo moon missions. But how can the Starship reach Mars on such a limited amount of fuel? The answer lies in refueling. The integrated Starship system will begin to tip over towards the intended orbit as it ascends from the launch pad. Super Heavy rolls over while coming back to Earth after the upper stage separates in space. Super Heavy will spread steel structures dubbed grid fins from the sides of the rocket as it descends, fashioned like potato waffles. These will assist in guiding the rocket stage back to its launch pad so that it can be relaunched. SpaceX intends to use an arm on the launch tower to capture the falling rocket. This is the structure that allows engineers and crew personnel to access the spacecraft and rocket while they are on the launch pad. The spacecraft would dock or marry with another starship circling the Earth that serves exclusively as a propellant depot to refuel. At the back section of the ship, the two ships would truly mate. They link to the booster with the same mating interface they use for liftoff. It's fairly simple to transfer propellant. You utilize control thrusters to accelerate in the direction you wish to empty. The question then arises, what exactly will the Starship be used for? Well, Musk plans to build roughly 40 cabins in the payload area towards the front of the upper stage, each with a capacity of five to six people for long-haul voyages to Mars and back, which might take up to nine months each way. 
Common areas, storage space, a galley, and a shelter would be located in the payload bay to protect passengers from solar storms, which occur when the sun spews hazardous charged particles into space. NASA's Artemis mission, which intends to create a long-term human presence on the moon, will also use Starship. The US Space Agency gave SpaceX a $2.89 billion contract in April of 2021 to develop Starship into a lander capable of sending astronauts to the moon this decade. The cargo, or uncrewed, variant of Starship has a payload bay that opens up like a crocodile's mouth. This would make it possible to launch satellites from it. The high payload capacity, according to SpaceX, offers up possibilities for new sorts of robotic science missions, including telescopes larger than the James Webb Observatory, which will succeed Hubble in the near future. The system might also be used for space tourism and high-speed travel between Earth's many regions. Musk claims that Starship will someday be able to transport people to places in the greater solar system, including gas giants like Jupiter. However, this is a long-term goal. Engineers have used parachutes or constructed the vehicle such that it can land on a runway to return other spacecraft to Earth. The upper stage of the Starship, on the other hand, adopts a different strategy. When the ship is ready to land, it enters the atmosphere at a 60-degree angle before belly flopping to the ground in a horizontal position. The vehicle's descent is slowed totally by the environment in this mode of return. The disadvantage is that Starship is inherently unstable in this setup. To regulate its descent, the vehicle has four steel landing flaps positioned near the front and rear of the vehicle. Starship should be slow enough to complete an engine burn that flips the vehicle into a vertical orientation as it reaches the Earth. The Raptors are then used as retro rockets to help guide the vehicle to a safe landing. Musk claims that this general approach may be used to safely land Starship on any planet in the solar system. SpaceX has been testing multiple upper stage designs at its Starbase site in Boca Chica, Texas during the last three years. The company began in 2019 with a 39-meter tall test piece called Starhopper, which was flown to a height of 150 meters. Starship serial number SN8, the first prototype with a nose cone and flaps, soared to a height of 12.5 kilometers in December 2020. It belly flopped back to Earth, providing SpaceX with crucial engineering data on the vehicle's final stages of return from space. SN8, on the other hand, approached the landing pad too quickly and forcefully, causing it to crumble and explode. Three additional test pieces detonated before Starship SN15 was able to land safely in May 2021. How soon should we expect to see this project come to fruition and for mankind to finally step foot on Mars? Well, Starship will be launched on Super Heavy for its maiden orbital test flight in 2021, according to SpaceX. Elon Musk has promised Yusaku Maizawa, the Japanese internet retail entrepreneur, a lunar trip in 2023. In a Starship with eight other people, Mr. Maizawa will travel around the moon as part of NASA's Artemis 3 mission, which is also scheduled for 2024. Starship will transport personnel from lunar orbit to the moon's surface. Musk also claims that in 2024, one of the vehicles would be launched on an unmanned mission to Mars. Even if the SpaceX founders' timeframes have been optimistic at times, he has a track record of reaching his objectives, no matter how lofty. So, how excited are you to see mankind aim for Mars? Leave us a comment below and let us know what you think. If you want to support us and watch more videos like this, hit the like and subscribe button and hit the bell icon to keep getting updates from us. See you next time!